Hello and welcome back. In this part, we're going to study structs in Rust programming language. As the Rust book tells us that structs are similar to tuples, in that both hold multiple related values. And like tuples, the pieces of a struct can be different types. So struct can hold integers, can hold booleans, can hold strings. So let's take a look how a struct will look like. So as we saw in the documentation, structs are used to name and package together related values similar to tuples. So a tuple, for example, will look something like this. Uh, let's have a rectangle, for instance, rectangle. This rectangle is equal to 200 and 400 or 500, doesn't matter. Okay, so this is the rectangle tuple. It has width and height. Okay, and immediately you saw that it has type inference, which means that it already identified that this is I32 for both numbers, basically. However, unlike tuples, each field in a struct is named. Um, this provides clear identification of what each value represents. So this feature makes struct unique, more flexible and expressive compared to something like tuples. Um, data is basically accessed solely if you will order it. Um, I know that I'm talking gibberish to make things clear. Let me just um, have a comment here and say this is a struct. So let's have a struct of a book, for instance. So we will start that by typing the keyword struct. Okay. And the name of that struct in our case, that's a book. You will open and close curly braces. And inside here, you will have different variants. So uh, the first variance here is title. The title, it has data type of string. So this is a string data type that is assigned to that title. We can uh, create more of those. So we can have a title, we can have an author, we can have a um, number of pages, for instance, that's going to be I32 or U32 rather, because it's positive. Um, also, we can have a Boolean value, which is available or not available. And let's uh, delete those. Let me just um, change. So for the title, that's fine. Author is a string, also fine. For pages, we'll have U32. And for available, we'll have bool. All right. So these are uh, the different variants that you can create inside your struct. Uh, we can create another one. So I'm going to use the keyword struct here. And I want the name, which is going to be user in this case. Inside user, I want different variants. Each variant will have um, its own data type. So for instance, we have uh, active. Active in this case is bool. Also, we will have the username. In this case, it's going to be a string, of course. Also, we can have an email. It's going to be um, a string. And finally, we can have something like sign in count. So sign in count. And that's going to be U64 and assigned 64 bits. All right. So that's another struct. So we have two structs now, book struct and user struct. This user struct here includes fields for whether the account is active, the username, email, and assign an account. And the beauty of the struct is that you can create an instance of that struct. Okay, it's like in Python, when you create a class, you can instantiate an object by you can instantiate that class by creating an object. So for instance, if we have um, struct animal, for example, you can instantiate that struct by creating a dog object. So we can create an instance by specifying the values for each of the fields. Okay, so we have active username, email and sign in account. Let me actually instantiate that user struct. Uh, I'm going to do user one, user one is equal to user. And inside here, I want to set the different variants. So the first one active is going to be set to true. All right. So you see the idea, I think you get the idea now. Username is a string. And that's going to be whatever the name so some username. Also, uh, we need the email, the email also is a string. 
and we can say some username at m dot whatever com. And finally, the sign in account is going to be an integer or a number. So sign in account is one. So if you will hover over here on user one, you will find that user one is of type struct, which is user. Um, it's worth noting here that the entire struct instance must be mutable in order to modify any of the fields inside. So we're going to turn that into a mutable struct. So if I want to update, for instance, um, the email, let's say, okay, um, if I will say, for instance, user one dot email uh, is equal to string from, and we'll say here, I don't know, another email at m um, at m.com. So let's try to print that to check out. I will say print ln. And I will say here, user email is and then here I will just say user one dot email. All right, let's open the integrated terminal. And let's do cargo run. Okay, so user email is another email at m.com. So it has effectively updated the email inside our object inside our instance of that user struct. Let me try to uh, comment this line out. And let's do um, also user email, let's keep it like that. And let's try to run that. All right, so user email is some username at m.com. That's before the updating that's the original one inside our um, user one instance here. And you can do that for the phone number if you have phone number for sign in count for everything, all the fields you can update them. So let's continue, we can also uh, return a struct from a function. How we can do that, let's create a function, let's say, um, build underscore user. And it has a parameter of email, and that's going to be a string. Also, it has a username, also, it is a string. Inside here, we will have a struct of user. And that user has different variants or different fields. So it has active, which is set to true. It has an email, which is initially set to nothing. Um, username, also nothing. And signing count is set to one. I forgot one very important um, thing here that we need to return a user struct. Now this example here uses field in it shorthand, which simplifies the code when variable names match the struct field names. Alright, so the point here is that from a function, you can actually return a user and do not forget this, right? This means that you return a user struct from this builder user function. Also, you can create instances from other instances, right? So how so let's say that we have uh, user two, for example, and user two is, of course, is equal to the user struct, and we want a specific variant or specific field, which is the email, of course, the email is a string from another at m.com. So here, what you have done basically is that you have created a new instance, which is user two, and then you use the email of user one, except of course, for the fields that explicitly set to new values. So if you want to keep all of the other values the same, you would do like this, you would do dot dot user, uh, oops, user one. All right. Uh, but just I want to note here that why we have uh, specifically chosen the email because we have two. we have one here and we have another one here we have updated it. So that simply means here that all other fields are the same active username and sign in count, except for the email that we have just fetched it from um, from user one, but we have specifically stated that we want another at m.com. Alright, so you can create instances from other instances. And that in my opinion is a very powerful feature. Also, there is something called the tuple structs. 
they are like normal structs but the main difference is that they do not have any name fields so you can create um, a tuple struct by saying struct like you would do as always the name of your struct and then you'll open parentheses like that and you can say that here i want i32 i32 and i32 okay you can also change that so we have two different structs here and also we can create some instances so uh, let's do let black is equal to um, color and the black of course is zero 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 and we'll have white so let's say uh, let white is equal to color and here we'll change that to 255 um, also, there is something called unit-like struct, unit-like struct, like that. Unit-like structs are very specific. They have no fields and are used when you need a type to implement a trait, but don't need to store data. So you can say, for instance, um, struct always equal, and then you instantiate um, subject by saying always equal. Okay, and immediately it identifies it that this is a struct. And of course, it doesn't have any implementations. It's just a struct. It's just a class. We don't have any functions attributed to that class yet. All right. And that's everything that I have for you guys uh, in terms of structs in Rust programming language. We have covered all of the structs that you can find in the official documentation of Rust programming language. And with that, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next lesson.